All right. So, thanks uh, everyone for joining. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for joining this webinar. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the presenter. Uh, so good day, everyone. And, and I would like to thank all of you for joining this webinar, uh, especially during this epidemic, uh, COVID-19, which is affecting everyone globally. Uh, my name is uh, Akeem Olu Luashin, and I am going to be the presenter for today's uh, webinar. So a little bit uh, summary about, about myself. I am a CEO of Accolade Technology, uh, also the organizer for meetup groups. Uh, so one of the meetup group uh, is uh, build a rem remarkable brand and technology for your business. Uh, for some of you in this meetup group, uh, that joint thanks, and also, uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS Nigerian User Group, uh, which has about close to 2,000 user group. So I have been working, um, I have a working experience in technology industry for more than 16 years uh, with big companies, small enterprise company. Uh, the company uh, that I work for, Alcola Tech, is an enterprise uh, information technology company uh, that build complex IT solution for businesses in US and, and Nigeria. So this webinar is going to be recorded. Um, this is the link for the website of the company. All right, so today's topic will consist of, you know, discussing about working remotely and adopting cloud computing. Uh, how to get to how to get help and how to start uh, working remotely. I'm going to go over how to work remotely and be productive using technology. Uh, going to talk about some talking points and also how to adopt cloud computing. Uh, some of the benefits and and um, how do you embrace cloud computing and how to get help. All right, so I'm going to talk about a little bit history of how do we even get started? Um, how do we get, how do remote work started? Uh, so how do we get here? Uh, remote work is not new. Um, like some people and most of you uh, who know, it's just, growing in popularity uh, thanks to the technology and the internet. Uh, likewise, uh, remote working, uh, working remotely wasn't developed overnight. Uh, and this started during the first adoption of the internet in 1980. So this remote work doesn't happen overnight, it's a transition. So before the industrial revolution, uh, everyone worked from their home uh, you know, skilled laborers such as carpenter, blacksmith, tailor, and others, um, professional, they used to work from home, <clears throat> excuse me, before uh, any in technology involvement, people used to work from home outside, you know, in front of their house or inside their home. But after the Industrial Revolution, uh, this led to the invention of automation, uh, factories and and this give incentive for businesses to have offices factories for their employees and then you see the shift of people moving into this um, you know this this space because of the uh, the industrial revolution and another revolution is the growth of the advanced technology uh, such as the personal computer uh, the internet Wi-Fi uh, the usual typical eight hours uh, workday uh, in the office for most people uh, now extended towards taking some of the workload to home. So you see comp 
employees, you know, be able to be more flexible and move some of the workload to their home. Um, and which leads to remote work as we transition into personal computers such as laptop, phones, tablets, uh, and then also the, 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 the bring your own devices where people can also be more flexible. So as more people started to own personal computers, phones, tablets, people are connecting their devices to the internet, uh, which kind of paved way to the remote work. So people start, you know, using all these technology devices and, and this, the world become more, uh, you know, digital base. And then you see all these trends of technology uh, connection, you know, uh, within the internet. So this even make remote work more visible because people now can also uh, do so much. Uh, nowadays, the internet has changed the way we conduct business. And this leads to the expansion of working from home. Uh, the same workload that most people used to do uh, in the offices can be accomplished from home. And I'm going to talk about so how to work remotely uh, and be productive using technology. So uh, what I would be discussing is why do you need to work remotely and the urgency of business continuity plan and understanding how to be productive using technology, uh, which is to optimize remote work and collaboration by adopting cloud. Uh, also, I'm gonna share this present uh, slide to uh, some of you that join. Um, uh, you can probably type your email in the chat room and then I can send you the, the slide or if you join the, the, um, the meetup group, I can also send it as well, thanks. All right. So why do you need to work remotely? And, and this is some of the questions that are uh, often asked by most people. And, and, you know, if I used to have my office, you know, work from office, why do I need to work from, from home? Uh, so let's go back and, and think about one aspect of how remote work can be more, you know, be more, uh, visible and you know flexibility is one of the um, the, mo uh, the most important thing of working remotely able to do more and increase productivity uh, having the flexibility to do so many things meet your deadline uh, so and we know like companies expecting more from employee during this um, you know you know things have changed uh, you, you know employees are doing more work than they used to do before because you know, companies expect more uh, productivity output from their employee. So, you know, meeting your deadline and complete your project on time. <clears throat> this is some of the trends that people would like to take the workload on and, and, and finish it on time. Also less distraction in the office. And sometimes we do always have a lot of distraction like, people constantly pulling you off to different uh, tasks. Even, you know, when you're trying to focus on your, on your tasks, you see people, uh, maybe they need you to do something for them. Uh, and this constant distraction can also uh, impact your, your, uh, your work output. Uh, ability to do other things um, at home, such as taking care of family. This is one of the work, uh, work-life balance that, you know, people prefer like, you know, if you sick or if you have a little challenges or having problem with your car, maybe you can work from home and then also have time for your family. Uh, disaster epidemic uh, and, and, and different unforeseeable uh, situation. This is some of the things that we are going to right now, which is the epic uh, epidemic of uh, COVID-19, uh, social distance, uh, which is one of the, uh, the main problem that people cannot go to work. Uh, many businesses have shut down during this period. Uh, some businesses cannot continue to function like they used to because 
the there is no flexibility of working remotely and you see businesses shut down uh employees get laid off or in a follow where their employee is not able to meet their demand but still have them to be available in case you know the the demand of production uh increases and this is happening globally this is not just happening in one country this is global global effect and you can see what um you know one incident uh epidemic can can actually put uh global economy at hot which is what we're experiencing right now if your business is set up to work from home uh you'll be able to survive during this period but not most businesses or employees have been set up to work uh this uh situation so most businesses could not function so this is what we're going to be talking about how if you have a business of your employee if you're professional how do you get yourself uh acquitted in during this period and and after all right so all right so another aspect is is the urgency of business continuity plan. So you see uh, during this period or even before this period, um, there is sometimes company will face downtime uh, from office and there's no plan. You see businesses uh, not be able to function. In. You see, um, you know, even banks uh, sometimes will be hot because there is problem with some kind of a power situation, a network situation, or equipment situation. It could be anything. Not able to work in the office for some reason. Uh, if there's a fire in the building, if there is a construction, it could be anything. Uh, so downtime uh, can be a big issue where people cannot even go to the office. Backup plan. Uh, for disaster recovery, uh, this is some. This is another urgency for business to be able to have some kind of, uh, pro, you know, protection of how do you uh, recover quickly. You know, having a disaster recovery plan in case uh, there is no access to the office. So some of the things, uh, and you know, some businesses who have already equipped themselves during this period were able to mobilize their employee and be able to av avoid. Uh, this um, situation, but you know, but companies are done. It, it's it, it, it's it's very sad because you know we know companies are shutting down or closing uh, shop or closing their building uh, because there's no demand. There's nobody's moving. Uh, having a failover plan for your business continuity and some of the things I'm also going to talk about. You know, some how do you you know recover. Having a plan is another key because if we don't know what is going to happen, uh, there's unforeseeable situation where things can happen, just like we are in right now. But how do you mobilize your your, your business so that it can start functioning even during this epidemic? All right. So understanding how to be productive. Uh, so to optimize remote productivity and collaboration by adopting cloud. So how do you become productive using technology during this um, uh, during this period or after or be able to uh, work remotely and also increase your productivity? So number one is to be effective and working remotely. You have to use the right technology that works for your business and if that works for you and your business you have to use the right technology there's so many technology but like i said the productivity is the key able to do more use leveraging those technology uh be focused and stay on plan uh be focused stay on your on your agenda uh some of the productivity tools that uh facilitate remote uh work uh having email communication where you can communicate you can send messages um laptop uh using uh, the communication channel which is whatsapp sms a uh, complete productivity application um we have that in place 
such as uh, using email, file sharing, communication, uh, collaboration in, in, in a space where, you know, business still continue, you still continue doing your work, but, you know, you are using all these tools. Uh, some of these, I'm going to also talk about some of these uh, tools, which is using Google G Suite, uh, Google, which is Google Drive, Google, uh, the Google fleet of application. Microsoft has um, other tools uh, that it can be leveraged, uh, 365, uh, Zoho, uh, Hoodoo. There's so many uh, tools out there that you can use, but understanding how to use them is very key. All right. So what are the pros and cons of choosing to work remotely? So uh, as Talk about flexibility. So number one, flexibility. Uh, your workspace can vary by anywhere. Uh, you know, it could be in your living room, it could be your dining. So that's just the flexibility. Uh, right now, I'm sitting in front of my uh, little room doing this um, uh, webinar. So it could be anywhere. Schedule can start late, so you can start late. Um, you can work late, you can start early. You can be more flexible in choosing your time. Uh, you can say, okay, let me come, let me start early so I can put some more time during the day. You can wake up at, you know, 6 a.m. Uh, but if you have to go to the office, you have to commute. And, and you know, some people that work in Lagos or that work from mainland and then travel to island, you know, could take, you have to get up early. Um, you know, if you have to take a transportation, I can even expand your travel. So that flexibility is the key. Uh, Work-life balance, uh, that's another thing. It's like you can also take your, some of your personal, um, personal tasks uh, while you be able to uh, also put some effort into, into your business or, or company or your profession. Actually, there is... Uh, a study that people that work from home actually, you know, commit more uh, time and efforts than when you work in the office because of distraction. Savings is another key. You save money on commuting to the office itself. Um, <clears throat> and you can see, I'll give you an example. During this period, the oil price went down because people are not even commuting. So there's nobody demanding for oil or some of the items or um a commodity that we used to to buy when everything is normal so everything is 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 abnormal now so practice of all is done because there's no demand so this is one of the things is you save money from committing you save money on gas on fixing your car uh renting an office building expansion so businesses can save money in renting office maybe you don't need a big office maybe you need a smaller office uh, you save money on food, clothes, um, you know, some of the things like because you have to dress nicely, so you have to spend money. And then food, you have to make sure you have some food. Uh, printing, um, you know, you don't need to have a bigger printer uh, in, your, in your home office, um, you know, you, you know, which is worth, you know, if you're in the office, you can print, you can print uh, a larger portion of print. Be independent. Uh, you have less distraction. That's what I, I mentioned this early. Less distraction. You don't have people pulling you off to different tasks. You will be able to focus. Ability to focus on tasks. That's the key. Avoid office politics. Uh, we all know office politics is some of the things that we often face in in, in corporation environment where people constantly um, you know put politics into into business. So. You can have, you know, you can spend more time, increase your productivity, spend more time on your project, rather than spending time in politics or spending time in some of the things that you ne necessarily put in effort or, you know, uh, making you more productive. So the the cons of working remotely, uh, we can talk about, um, you know, the disadvantage, lack of social collaboration which is uh, what we're experiencing right now, the lack of in-person face-to-face -face interaction. So even though remote work 
uh, you know, give you uh, great benefits. There's also uh, some cons, and you have to outweigh the cons and benefit, or you, or you, um, you balance it out, which is so. Some company, and we're gonna see a different changes that after we transition from this um, epidemic, things will change. Maybe companies will start saying, asking the employee to work certain days from home, certain days from the office. We're gonna see. Uh, so also the social interaction face-to-face -face is also the key. You know, sometimes you wanna see face-to-face -to, -face to people, you wanna be able to like feel their reaction. Uh, office meeting in person uh, is also, I don't know, on, on, on online, you can see that person face to face. You can have uh, a mutual connection with that person. Lack of office equipment, uh, such as big printer, big monitors. And we all know like in the office, there's enough space where you can put two big, big screen monitors or big screen uh, for your uh, presentation. When you're working from home, you don't have all that luxury. Uh, boring moments, um, you know, you'd be working by yourself at work, like you can bring politics, you can talk about, you know, uh, football, sports, and all, all other uh, activities that can bring, you know, the social aspect of, of human nature. Uh, security protection, uh, sometimes companies has uh, infrastructure in place where they have VPN, firewall protections and security protection. But at the same time, those protection can also be facilitated towards the remote work. That's, you know, it's just tunneling and using VPN or some kind of secure channel. All right. so. What is the security protection uh, regarding working uh, from home? So there is a security aspect of it, um, if, especially if you're dealing with sensitive information, uh, you have to have security protection in place. Working from home is not safe to security flaws, um, you know, and your working devices need to be protected. If you have sensitive information, you would need to have security protection in place. Uh, it, you know, working from home, we all know that you can, ex you know, there's a, a, a spammers, there's hackers who can take your information and, and profit out of it or do some, something bad. But, you know, you have to put the security in place. So one of those security measures is having VPN. If you're going to be working for uh, your company that you're gonna be accessing sensitive data like customized information, uh, health record, uh, account information, you have to go through the VPN. So what VPN is, is just private, virtual private network which allows you to communicate or transaction online securely, going to the secure tunnel. That is one, as there's so many VPN out there, you can, you can even implement one for yourself. Uh, it's cheaper now. It doesn't have to be on a corporate level. So it can be your own personal uh, VPN that you use. Uh, firewall is some of the thing protection, like have, have a firewall in, uh, in place where you can protect your assets, you can protect your devices. Um, you know, firewall gives you this wall between your, your, uh, your system or your network and the outside network. Uh, using some kind of a multi-factor authentication, uh, we all know password can be vulnerable sometimes if you don't have a strong, even if you have a strong password, if, if it's been exposed and somebody was able to compromise it, it could be another um, uh, uh, a problem to, to your data or to your, uh, to your assets. So having some kind of multi-factor authentication, what is MFA? MFA is uh, think about it as a pin. When some of you log into your bank account, uh, you're doing online banking, they will ask you uh, to put your phone and then they will text you and then they will, hide it. They will ask you to add that code to log in. So that is uh, called multi-factor authentication. It's, it's another level of authenticate for you to be able to um, uh, protect yourself, even if you have a password, but using your devices, which is your phone, your email, 
to authenticate yourself so that even if your password is get compromised, somebody cannot even get access to your phone because your phone is always going to be available to you. Antivirus and anti malware protection. Uh, put antivirus on your on your on your system to make sure it's protected. If you're going online, if you're doing anything, use those um, uh, protection. Avoiding clicking on uh, phishing URL link with your web, with your email. And you know, during this period, there's a lot of um, uh, hackers, farmers out there sending, uh, you know, misleading information in order to compromise, in order to, to you know, to fish and, and, and collect people's data. So be careful uh, when you, you know, see email attachment or link that you don't know of, don't click on it. Uh, be careful because those can be very, uh, it, could be, it could be a spam or it could be a, a fish. So phishing is, is how to, you know, uh, deceive people in pretending that is, is uh, authentic email, but it's not, it's just coming from malicious place. Uh, take protection training, such as cybersecurity training, uh, protection training uh, during this period is also help uh, to be able to avoid some of these, um, you know, tail sign that you can easily uh, detect. All right, so we're going to move to the next topic, and I'm going to give us a room later on to ask QA uh, question. Uh, so adopting uh, cloud. So what do you need to, why do you need to embrace cloud computing? Uh, and, and, and I wanted to also, uh, for some of you who doesn't know what cloud computing is, what is a cloud computing? Uh, if you are using Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Facebook, Instagram, or any online platform, you're already using cloud computing. It's not, nothing new. It already exists years and years before. It's just the term. Uh, cloud computing is a method of using network of remote computers uh, and the internet to access information online, which is what your, Gmail, your email, your Facebook does. Uh, cloud computing makes computing resources easily accessible and affordable. And the best part is it's either free or you pay by use. Uh, that is the concept of cloud computing. Why do you need to adopt cloud computing? Uh, the, the one important thing to know is when you adopting cloud computing is the importance of being agile. When I mean agile is you more accessible, uh, you more, you know, you can access information anywhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, one specific location in the office. It's more accessible, you know, as long as you have internet. Uh, in other words, the ability to provide continuous services to your customer all the time, or to your employee, or to yourself personally, to be able to, for example, if you're working on a file, uh, let's say you're doing, uh, you know, you, you write in a report. Uh, you want to be able to access that report after you left, you leave office. You want to go home. You want to continue Use, and, uh, using cloud computing um, tools can allow you, which is, you know, uh, file sharing can allow you to accomplish this. All right, the benefit of transformation into the cloud. So what is the benefit of adopting cloud? There's so many, so many benefits. Number one benefit is the scalability. You can scale based on your need. Uh, like I said, if you go back to the, the, the meaning of cloud computing is you pay, it, it could be either free or pay per use. Uh, meaning like you can start simple and then you can scale up based on your demand. So company, might not need to provision a lot of uh, resources like computers or like server or files or, you know, whatever it is in your organization or your business, even your personal life. You don't need to go buy, you know, 20 terabytes disk or 20, you can, you can buy small and then you scale based on your demand. Uh, based on your demand. Business continuity is another aspect of why business, of why you need to transition into the cloud. Uh, meaning, 
we are experiencing this epidemic. Uh, if you adopt cloud, your business can continue because there's no uh, physical infrastructure layer uh, that you have in your building or your office. You can transition that easily by moving your workload to the cloud and still continue to do your business and servicing your client. But in some other cases, you might have issue where, you know, if, you, uh, if you're into a restaurant, you might still need to uh, have physical presence and have your customers uh, come to your location. But the technology, you can have uh, online order, people can order online, and then you can, you know, you go into your uh, platform online and transition those delivery to your customers. People are doing it right now. There's a company making uh, transition their business from uh, brick and mortar to, to, the, to uh, online. Uh, continue to run your business during disaster, uh, during the epidemic, work remotely. Uh, business continuity facilitates working remotely. Uh, company that have that in place can allow the employees to work remotely during this period. Savings, uh, you save a lot of money on computing resources. Uh, you know, you don't have to buy a lot of computers, uh, software, like I said, you only buy based on your demand uh, as your demand increases. And then you can scale up, you can scale down. Uh, no more buying physical computer software. Um, uh, and, and if you look, if you buy all these the devices, uh, sometimes they might be absolute or you might need to upgrade, meaning like you have to buy more and, and refreshing and buy new new um, computer or new licenses. You only pay uh, for what you use. The, the benefit of the cloud computing is you only pay for what you use. You're not paying in, in, in a lot of uh, excess uh, that you don't need. All right. So cloud security protection, uh, how do you put, even you, like I said, if, it, if, if even you transition into the cloud, you still have to have security protection. Transition into the cloud does not provide complete security protection, even though your computer resources are protected, but it's your responsibility to protect your data. The cloud uh, vendors, the cloud company will protect your your equipment, I mean, your systems, your computers, your, but it's your responsibility to protect your, your data, meaning your, your own uh, information. Uh, access control is one of it, restrict access to any critical data, uh, cloud computing resources, uh, administrator, users control, so provide some kind of access control that you limit to get access to those, uh, those resources, like who, when, and how they log in. You can track their login. Uh, bring your own devices control. Like when people are connecting their devices, uh, even their own personal devices to your cloud or to your uh, uh, platform, you have some kind of control. Like who is, you know, should I allow these devices to connect to my, um, to my system? Uh, VPN, uh, have VPN, uh, which is virtual private network in place so that you have your uh, encryption. Uh, firewall protections is another thing. You protect uh, your, you create a wall between your system or your network. Cyber security protections is another thing. You're using antivirus and anti malware. And, and I'll tell you a story of a company that ignore all this. Um, they don't have all the security in place. They don't even transition into cloud, but they have physical, um, physical system, physical server and they, they don't have any protection, they don't have any firewall. A firewall license was expired, but they, they were avoiding the upgrade or the renewal. So what happened is they get compromised uh, through um, uh, cyber, uh, through ransomware where their data files were compromised and it was being encrypted by malicious Hackers and they have to pay uh, $15,000 for, for each file. So things, you know, this is very serious. So having this security in place is, is a key, um, you know, to protect yourself. At least protection, you can avoid all these. 
application protection is up, you know, even in most of this uh, cloud um, solution, people are running uh, applications, their, their internal application that they provide for their customers, protect those applications, make sure they are protected so that they are not exposed outside um, if you have necessary firewall and other protection in place. All right. So how do you how get help and how do we, how do you get started? So uh, I have some tips um, uh, that can that people can benefit from. Uh, so remote work adoption. Uh, what are some of the things that you have to put in place? How do you start to transition to remote work or implement remote work in your work uh, in your company or your work life? Uh, adopting technology that allows remote work, as we mentioned before. Uh, laptop, you have to have a laptop, phones, tablet, email, uh, collaboration uh, tools in place. File sharing, uh, CRM and more. Uh, if some of, some of you have a uh, question type, I will answer those questions later on. I just want to go through this uh, presentation and then we have room for QA and answer. Do not spend too much time, uh, money uh, on technology tools that would not work effectively uh one of the things you do is try do do free trial tools uh just don't jump into it because somebody tells you to start using those tools you know explore those tools uh you know ask do you guys have free trial that i can use uh, all these companies and vendors they have free you know that you can use so i put some of the list uh, out there for you to see so so is doing uh remotely uh free till July 2020, this is free. You can use meeting, showtime, work drive, uh, project, uh, sheet and show. I can send you more information about this and how do you access them. But yeah, you know, they're giving out for free for now because of the situation. So one is also free. You have, you can do your sales and marketing. These are all cloud uh, and, and tools that you don't have to implement yourself. It's already available. Uh, they have CRM, which is, available for 15 days. Office 365, which is from Microsoft Premium, they have one more free, uh, you know, which include email, Microsoft uh, uh, Drive and share SharePoint. Uh, Google also have 15 days. So use this free trial, see which one works for you, and then you can decide which one you wanted to adopt. Also, uh, cloud computing, uh, make it simple. Don't make it complicated. Make it simple. Cloud com com uh, computing adoption. Look at your current situation first. Uh, look for, start with critical application. Uh, if you wanted to transition into the cloud, assess your current situation. Uh, transition your critical application like your email, your in-house application that needs to be running. Uh, even, uh, you know, disaster, those applications can continue to be running. Move your workload gradually, don't transition quickly, just start moving them gradually. Access the, uh, the options and vendors, you know, assess those options that you have and also the vendors. Look for vendors that has experience in the cloud migration. All right, so how can, you know, how can we help you? Uh, so, uh, because we are a technology company, um, you know, we also allowing our persons and helping businesses to transition during this period. Uh, remote work, uh, you know, we offer 20% discount on email, you know, web hosting. Uh, if some of you, you know, you're looking to, you know, leverage, uh, you know, cloud solution native of you know, email, web hosting, we've given 20%. Uh, Remote work tools, uh, we can help you uh, transition those remote work uh, easily, uh, set you up. Cloud, we can help you migrate into the cloud seamlessly. Uh, we have our dedicated cloud. Now, this is not just about promoting our business, but it's just like helping businesses who doesn't know how to do this, um, who's looking for help. Uh, we can also be, be uh, uh, an help during this period. Uh, you know, remote workflow productivity, access to your favorite app. We can also help you implement those. 
cloud production tools, um, you know, such as Shift, Google, Microsoft, and other things, um, security protection such as MFA. So the tools that I talk about, uh, if you don't know how to do it yourself, or if you don't have the resources, we can also help you uh, put those in place uh, as you need. So how do you contact us? This is our contacts. Um, you know, if you go to our website, you can call our main line. You can email us uh, for any problem. So let's start with the QA and answer. If anybody has questions and answer uh, that anybody wanted to. So let me look at the chat. So we see a lot of people that Uh, some people can't hear me. Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, some people say, yeah, you can hear me. Okay, okay. Uh, if you can't hear me, I think it's probably uh, maybe your, your internet. Uh, if you guys, if you wanted to ask any question, you can unmute yourself and ask question. This is Q and A. Uh, you can unmute yourself if you guys wanted to do that. Or you can drop your question in the chat. You guys can meet yourself if you wanted to ask any question. Did anybody have any questions? Questions, questions? Yes. Um, Yes, uh, yes, I can, you can share uh, our WhatsApp. Uh, you can, so I, I can share our WhatsApp with you. Uh, Anybody has any other question? You guys can mute yourself if you want. Uh, I think everybody's on mute, so you can unmute yourself or if you can post your questions in the chat room. We got like... We, we have one question, sir. We okay, have one please. question. Okay, please. What was the, what's the question? Okay. Okay, so he's asking on cloud computing, he wants to know the platform that Acolab Tech has explored. If we've explored AWS, uh, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform, which of the platform we have really explored? Yes, thank you. For, thanks for that answer. So we have explored, um, you know, most of the, we have our own cloud. Uh, like I said, we also explore Amazon uh, Cloud, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, and also Microsoft Cloud. Uh, but we are heavily with AWS. Uh, we use it ourselves. Uh, we also help our clients um, because AWS is, because they, have, they are the leader. So that's why we adopt AWS more than the other one. But we still also use other cloud companies. So we use uh, Google, we use, um, uh, Amazon, we use uh, Digital Ocean. Uh, so it depends, also depends on the cloud, on the company. We also advise clients on which one is best. So for example, if you uh, Windows, you use heavily on Windows, we can, you can look at, you know, Microsoft and, and Amazon, which is AWS and compare which one, you know, helps you better in terms of price, in terms of the resources, and in terms of, um, you know, services. So this, you know, 
and then we'll you know we advise and we'll recommend which one fits or even even our own cloud our home cloud is private if you're looking for like a private cloud um you can have your own dedicated private so we can and there's also we, we you can do a public cloud as well uh is Uh, any other question? We're still waiting. We're still okay. Still waiting. I just missed it. Well, you can unmute yourself. Um, you have mic. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. We have about five minutes more. People can answer questions. Right. Hello, Akim. Hi. Hey. Hi. So this is Isaac. I was starting your private a little bit. Um, if you could just please add the country code for your WhatsApp number, that will help. Oh, okay, okay, sure, we'll do that. Right, yeah. Thanks. Right. Any other questions? And also, I wanted to know: is is anybody using uh, any cloud computing resources or remote work? uh tools that you guys are currently using right now if... <clears throat> if you guys have one you can share it all right so i guess you don't have any question we will wait a little bit so uh if you guys don't have any questions so you know looking forward um you know life is going to change and there's going to be a different uh business is going to change uh, i just want everybody to know like once this transition is over like people life becomes normal there's going to be new things and probably businesses will start looking into different ways of how they can uh how they can prevent or be ready in case of something like this happen because we don't know what's what is gonna be you know what is gonna happen next. We can only you know hope for you know and and be ready. But you know anything can happen. But if you have some of these things that I've talked in place uh, to help you uh, ready, uh, prepared, and can easily uh, you know handle this. Uh, during epidemic or during disaster. So this is some of the things that we have to uh, get used to after this. And we see a lot of companies looking to start a new businesses, some companies looking into how they're gonna transition after this, look back of what they lose or things that have happened that they can never recover and see how they can move forward so this is something that we all have to look into okay sir we have another question sir okay yes so the question is what is the best cloud computing tool you can advise yes so like like i said you try the do the free trial first um and it depends on what you're trying to accomplish so like this like at Microsoft offer those, Google offer those, there's every company offer those, even us, we offer those, um, those resources. But what you want to do is you want to access, you know, try those and see which one is, we works for you. And, you know, uh, if you a small company, uh, and if you're a bigger company, even if you wanted to do something personally for yourself, uh, you won't look in, you will not want to go spend money on something that is big. You might want to look for something. Maybe you, you just want to be able to do file sharing, for example, like be able to uh, work on your assignment, or maybe you wanted to work on 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 a task that you, you know, project that you're working on. But you want to be able to have it uh, that wherever you go, you get access to it. So, <clears throat> looking at all these tools. And see which one, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 
and see which one fits your business. Sorry, <coughs> excuse me. And see it and see which one works well for you. You know, not all of them are works well for you. Some of them might be too, uh, you know, too difficult or, or too complex. Maybe you need something simple. If you're a big company, maybe you need something that is more complex. If you're a small company, maybe you need something within that your employee can collaborate and share. Uh, you start with, you know, you can look into uh, Microsoft 365 that I just mentioned, uh, which is Office 365. You know, you can buy by license. And then if your employee comes in, you have more employees and you buy more license. The same thing with Google. You start with one license if you're one man. Uh, business of you uh, for your own personal and then if you bring in your employees so like Google has and all of them has so like they have this flexibility where you can buy license as you go like you know if you need if you hire a new employee you buy their license and then you you, you hire them and then if they leave you remove them and then you you know you cut on your expenses so it depends. Uh, there's no one specific. You just have to try them. That's why the try is good to see which one works well for you. Uh, and, and also it depends on your situation as well. Uh, hopefully I answered the question. Any other questions? Uh, I know we uh, run out of time. Any, uh, we are, yeah, 10, oh, yeah, so it's three o'clock. So any other questions? Hello, Akim. Yes, please. All right, good day. Amos is online. Hey, how you doing, Amos? Thanks for joining. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for the um, exposition. So I You're know, welcome. yeah, I just want to ask, but then I'm having this feeling that we may not be able to get the, um, you know, the breakdown of what the cost implication will be like, like, going into cloud computing for example but since you said you have a private cloud that is a company has a private cloud and one can explore since there is a uh, option of uh, a free trial trial period for yes. one to go into explore yes and i think after which one can now you know get back to you to talk about uh, cost implication that is depending on the offering that one wants to go with yes so maybe you can just uh, let us have the like yours that is private and that is peculiar to you. So just thinking if you can let us have access to it, where to go to, and if there is any um, form of guide or or a step by step approach to go into this. And one other question I would have loved to ask again is, you know, since we know that the this um, the Deployment models, you know, talking about infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and yeah. then platform as a service. Yeah. So the one you are rendering, I'm sure it's most likely to be a platform or infrastructure as a service. So these are many more are the things that I want us to, you know, really understand. And then also let us have guide in uh, exploring this. Uh, you know this computing option yeah. thanks so much Th thanks amos for the question that's a good question uh, so uh first question is our private cloud so the most companies so the companies that some of the companies that we work with um you know transition into the cloud they want to be able to move their workload into so that they have legacy hardware or legacy software and you know what legacy is, you have to constantly want it to upgrade. And if you wanted to buy, if you wanted to uh, use a license or software, it might not be compatible with their legacy. So you might need to upgrade, meaning you have to buy uh, another hardware uh, that can facilitate that uh, new software. And also license it, keeping up with the license with Microsoft or other, um, or Oracle or other uh, uh, vendors. But so for our cloud, what we have is right now we have it in in United States because most of these cloud providers they are in United uh, in United States or Europe. The reason why is the cost of setting up cloud in Nigeria is expensive because of the power uh, situation, uh, and we all know. 
uh, you have to have a, a good dedicated, and that cost itself cannot uh, accommodate the cost of running a, a business operation in Nigeria. Most businesses cannot afford it. Uh, if the, the the power becomes stable, yes, then you know you will see you will start seeing cloud provider coming to Nigeria and building um, this infrastructure. And it's cloud provider in Nigeria, which is using this, the same technology, but their technology is not far beyond some other company, but is way too expensive. So for our exploitation, yes, we have that facility in place where we can help you, um, you know, you can test drive those, those cloud. Uh, and you can also look into other public provider cloud uh, that we also partnership with, like Amazon, Google, or Microsoft, that you can also explore uh, at your own pace. Yeah, for our cloud, we give you access. You can try it for like a month uh, just to see how, you know, the interface and everything looks like. So regarding the platform, uh, like you, I think you mentioned like the guide on how to, bring, you know, to implement those platform into the cloud. So my advice is look, uh, so there are, so there are, if you have your own in-house application that you offer your clients, you might want to be able to, uh, transition those into the cloud easily if it's a complex application. If it's something that is easy, that you can just, um, you know, you can package it and just install it on, on any, any uh, platform or any uh, operating system. You can just, you know, move it in there and test it and see how it works and see the performance and see how it behaves. Uh, you can also look at some of the ready, uh, another platform as a services that is out there, for example, uh, like a database that is already uh, exists that you don't have to manage. Uh, uh, other software um, that you can uh, you can leverage as a platform. Uh, that and and you know this is what we do. Uh, we've helped businesses migrate. Um, you know, moving into the cloud, move their existing application into into our cloud or into, uh, you know, other cloud provider. Uh, but one of the experience is that we've had is you look at your application or your in-house application, you look at the critical components, which one needs to be running, uh, even there's a downtime. Those are the ones you should start migrating gradually. Uh, if it's a complex application, you might want to be able to start with the smaller one, like for example, like an email or like accounting software, some of the easy one that you can easily, you know, move uh, quickly. Or maybe you look into the option of uh, using, uh, as this, you know, a ready-made uh, software as a cloud or software as a services. Uh, that's, that's another option. It's like rather than building your own, Maybe adopt one that is already exist, which will save you time in maintaining and upgrading uh, those uh, application. I hope I answered the second question, uh, Amos. If not, please you can you can um, you can make comment on that. I'm trying to like you know capture that question. So uh, yeah, yeah, to to a, to a large extent. Okay, and yeah, so let me know when you know if you're ready. You can you know we can. <laughs> start looking into, you know, like I said, you don't have to move everything into the cloud. You just access, assess, you know, you know the current situation and look at which one um, that is critical, that is easy to move. And then you move that, you test drive it and see how it works. And then it's like, okay, now we're more comfortable to move everything or move another application. And then, you know, and you can, you can assess the performance and see how it behaves and see how you can access it. All right, any other question? I think we thank you guys for joining. Uh, you, you know, people that join, thank you. I'm gonna share the recording as well, and then the presentation slide. And if anybody has any question, please, um, you can go to our website, www.acolatech.com. Uh, uh, you can, you know, you can send us uh, questions, you can call us. Thank you guys. Any other question before I end? 
think we are good. So thank you everyone uh, for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is going to be the end of the webinar. Uh, hope you guys have a nice day and take care of yourself and be safe. Take care. Bye.